The fastest solvers are able to pull out 10 and even 13 TPS solves at the tip of a head. From a sub-10 perspective, it may look like all there is to it is drilling algorithms and practicing solves again and again. But there is actually a lot more to think about when talking about turning. The way that you turn can affect your solutions, your times, your pauses, your look ahead, and so much else. There's a reason why the turning styles of the top cubers are so diverse. It's because a lot of turning styles work well as long as you take advantage of their pros and minimize their cons. Today we're going to be discussing the most common mistakes that sub 10 cubers make while turning, as well as analyzing the solving styles of Let's start with a weird question. Why does Timon Klosinski use this R perm? It is longer than the standard dog, at 17 moves instead of 15. By all accounts, it should be slower. And yet, he chooses it. Which is weird, right? Let's keep this in mind, and maybe by the end of this video, you'll be able to answer this question. When improving turning, a lot of the focus is on the turning itself. Whether you can execute these F12, OLL, and PLL algorithms as fast as possible. But a big mistake that many cubers make is not thinking about the space in between the algs. First off, look ahead. Look ahead mistakes are by far the most common type of mistake when it comes to solving. And in order to understand why this is, we have to understand how look ahead works. When doing an F12 pair, there are three steps that your brain takes to execute it. First, your brain recognizes the pair, knowing the position of the corner as well as the position of the edge. The last step is obviously executing the case doing the moves necessary to solve the F12 pair. But the second step is connecting part one to part three. Your brain requires a split second to connect the information of the position of the F12 pair with the algorithm needed to execute it. If you aren't looking ahead to your next pair, then your brain will just be doing these three steps one after the other. Boom, bam, bop. But if you are using look ahead, then some overlap will happen. While doing step three for your current pair, you will also be doing step one for your next pair, and so on and so forth. But something that is often neglected is doing step two for your next pair as well. Often you see solves slow down during the AUFs between F2 all pairs because the solvers haven't braced to do their next pair yet. To eliminate this brief hesitation during look ahead, you should not only visualize the position of the next pair, but also the moves necessary to solve it. So, from a mental perspective, that's one of the reasons why pauses may occur during your solves. But the way you execute F2L may also play into this. To effectively transition from F2L algorithm to F2L algorithm, you must stay in the same default grip during the solves. This default grip is known as home grip, and it's something you are probably extremely familiar with. Your thumbs are on the front, your pointer fingers are ready to do U moves, and your ring fingers are ready to do D moves. One hand keeps the cube stable, and the other hand does wrist turns. You want your stabilizing thumb to just barely be over the centerpiece, so you can quickly transition from executing righty moves to lefty moves, and vice versa. It is easy to keep home grip when dealing with front slots, but when dealing with back slots, it gets a bit more difficult. For example, assume that you have this case. The fastest way to execute this is by regrouping with your thumb on the top. But this breaks home grip. We can use pinch, push, drag, and flick moves instead to execute this in a way that doesn't break home grip, but is slightly slower. Now, which one of these is worth it? It depends, and it's worth it to not only have multiple algs for a single up to all case, but multiple executions for it. For example, in this solve by Kim Roger Haraldson, he's able to swiftly regrip his left hand to do this pair from the back as he does a U move with his right hand. However, if the AUF between the pairs was a U prime instead of a U, it would be better to do the regripless execution. Of course, it's difficult to think of all these things during a timed solve, which is why it's worth it to do untimed solves to practice these things. Usually, untimed solves are used to work on efficiency, but they are just as powerful when working on your turning. Keep in mind that sometimes it's worth it to do slightly different F2 algorithms to keep a consistent home grip. For example, in this solve by Matty Hirodo Inaba, he does a slightly different alg for the worst F2 all case that allows him to not regrip. If you had this case from the front, you would insert this corner and do triple inverse sexy. But instead, if he since he had it from the back, he did a sexy move from the back, did a U2, and then did double sexy, which is slightly worse, but it allows him to not regrip and proves to be better in the context of the solve. 
And now this is where we transition into breaking down the turning styles of our four top cubers. Seung Hik Nam, Timofey Tarasenko, Kim Roger Haraldson, and Matty Hirota Nava. A solver that really excels in staying in home grip is Nam. If you look at his solves, they are pretty much pauseless. His turning quality is incredible, but more importantly is how consistent he is because of the careful and precise regrips that he pulls off. But in a word, this turning style is safe. It is incredibly resistant to lockups. However, because of this turning style, Nam is largely limited in the range of finger tricks he is able to access. For example, with this case, he often rotates twice instead of solving it with some F moves. This is definitely a flaw in his approach to solving, but something to note is that he doesn't get these cases often because he's very mindful of his look ahead and edge orientation. So if you are like Nam and uh, are very mindful of edge orientation and stuff, then this may be the type of turning style that you want to adopt. Now you can also go in the complete opposite direction with this. Timofey Tarasenko is a solver that breaks out of home grip a lot in his solves. If Timofey's solutions were similar to Nam's solutions, then doing all these regrips would be ridiculous. But Timofey maximizes the pros of this approach by doing more F-move algorithms as opposed to rotating and doing RU algorithms. First, we have an example of Timofey solving this pair. Uh, and usually, what some solvers would do would just be to do a sledgehammer and then insert. But Timofey actually finds that, uh, for him, it's actually faster to do something like this, where he takes this pair out and then inserts it. Now he does it this way because, first of all, he can do it ridiculously fast. If you look at the footage, I mean, it's just like, it's just like that. But second, he knows that he has to rotate for this pair as well. So he's going to have to sort of change his hands and regrip anyway. So why not just insert this pair in the fastest way for him, that is. So then he just rotates and does this pair. And his rotation is kind of just like that. So it's pretty much as fast as a rotation from home grip to home grip would be. So the third case is this, and he wants to solve these two pieces. He realizes that while solving these two pieces, he can actually orient this piece. Because if he just does a sledgehammer in the same way that a lot of other solvers would, that actually leads to a terrible case for this last uh, pair. So instead, he actually gives himself the freedom to do these FU moves and then insert it into the back. And that allows him to solve this last pair really smoothly and really efficiently. And that's something that you wouldn't have if you just were stuck in home grip. So being able to move out of home grip a bunch allows you to be much more creative and flexible in your solutions. Finally, this is probably the craziest uh, example of him using uh, F moves. He uses F moves to solve this pair and he doesn't do something like uh, like are you hedge or something like that, which would probably be the optimal thing to do if you want to do this uh, rotationless. Instead, he uses F moves to do double anti 60 like this. And he does this ridiculously fast as well. So it's clear that he is super accustomed to doing these F moves, which is crazy. So if you want to do F move algorithms like Timofey does, you have to be proficient at them. As you see, execution and choosing good solutions don't exist separately. And based on how you solve the cube, your optimal turning style will be different. The best turning style likely lies somewhere in the middle, such as in the turning styles of Matty Hiroto Inaba and Kim Roger Haraldson. These two solvers stay in home grip for most of this time, but also make sure to regrip for hard to execute cases. At the end of the day, however, it's impossible to bat 100 when executing F12, and you will make mistakes. So the final thing to learn is recovery, and Haraldson is a shining example of that. He turns ridiculously fast during his solves, speeding through F12 algorithms like it's nobody's business. You may think it's only important to drill last layer algs, but no, you have to drill all your algs. Let's take this solve for example. He messes up an F12 pair and has to redo it. For example, this is what he does. He does something like this, which is not the correct thing to do, and then has to redo it. But let's see how fast he's able to do that. Did you miss it? Let's play it again. So you can do random U moves, you can do a YY prime, but because you have such ridiculous TPS, you can still get sub-6 solves. During f well, you should be turning slower than your top speed most of the time, but you should know when to turn at your top speed and when to not. So now we can finally answer the question, 
Why does Timon Kolsinski use this R perm? Well, it's because the standard ALG has a regrip before it, and this ALG starts from a home grip. So although in theory this standard ALG is faster, in practice, this ALG is faster for him. And that's kind of what you should be thinking about throughout your entire solves. Is this regrip worth it? Is this rotation worth it? That's how you improve your turning. Thank you guys for watching. Special thanks once again to Caleb Chen and Kyle Santucci, who helped me sort my thoughts for this video. If you want to see more content about Timofey Tarasenko, I made a video about him a few months back, and Stewcube made a better video about him, so links for both of these videos down in the description and also in the cards. Special thanks to the 303 Solvers Discord for helping me a lot. Thanks for watching and bye.